a big reason why you're struggling right now is kind of twofold. Obviously, you mentioned hitting blocks and hooks, and you mentioned uh, suffering from a lot of heel strikes. When we look at a hand path that is, uh, you know, over the heels of the feet at the top of the backswing, and we look at where the club alignment is, in transition down, you have this really big pull down effect that happens. So what do we typically see with a golfer who pulls down on the club? Because my goal is I want to make you better long term. We kind of had this discussion, obviously, on our call. Like my goal is not to just say, hey, let's just band-aid the swing so that you don't hit a couple heel shots. It's long term, where are we going to see the most bang for our buck if we were to make some substantial changes right now? Well, top of the back swing, everything looks great. But then in transition down, you have a really big pull down effect. So that pull down is a lot of hand speed down towards the ground, not out towards the ball. Now, the best way to influence the hand path outward is through the body moving better, which we can talk about. But a lot of hand speed downwards creates a chain reaction of events that's going to cause you to really struggle. So what is going to cause you to struggle? Well, number one, the shaft angle when golfers pull down on the club with a lot of hand speed, the shaft pitch is going to get extremely steep into the ball. This is kind of what we're seeing, right? Tons of hand speed down, shaft angle is super vertical. Obviously, we can't really rotate from here. The club's just going to pitch out in front of the body. So we need to find a way to get this club to lay down. And obviously, it being so steep for so long into the downswing, <clears throat> you're typically going to do it later into this downswing after the pull-down situation occurs. So that's where we see a very clear-cut reaction from your body trying to offset the steepness. Look at where your spine is at this point and look at where your head is in relation to this red line and look at what happens going into the golf ball. So your body obviously extends a lot, really stalls your arms fully straighten out at the bottom to try to make contact with the ball because your head's backing up, your spine is straightening, right? Your spine is now closer to this angle. So some people call that early extension. I don't really like the idea of this being called early extension because you actually don't extend early. You extend too severely, I would call it, more than early extension. This is just called severe extension to me. Your body is jumping up way too much. And obviously, when the body jumps up, you can't really rotate through the ball. And then the arms have to straighten to make contact with the ball, right? Well, why is your body jumping up? That's the key. And obviously, it's because the shaft gets so steep. The lead wrist gets very cupped. So the face angle gets compromised. And then... Face angle and shaft pitch are like the two things the body typically reacts to the most. So if those two things are compromised, the body doesn't really have a chance to rotate or do anything through the ball. So that's where you jump a lot. And when players typically jump and they're not rotating, the hands exit away from them through impact. And when the hands are pushing away from you, you're also pushing the sweet spot away from you and you can expose the heel side of the club really fast. Right. So how do you get the hands to work inwards through impact, not to expose the heel? Well, the body's got to rotate. But then if you look backwards and you say, well, how does the body rotate? Well, it just has no chance to do that from here, really. Right? Everything's already kind of compromised at this point. So for me, backswing alignments, setup alignments, all of that look great. Like there is no concern on my end at this point with what I'm seeing with the setup and where the alignments get to at the top of the backswing. All of my concern right now coming into this ball is purely just the speed of the hands coming down way too aggressively downward, not being influenced out enough. When the hands do create that speed, the elbow typically is gonna get stuck a little bit behind the body. Lead wrist, like I said, is going to get cupped, right? So it's one of those things where it's like, if we slow down the speed of the hands, we get the arms staying wide, we get the right elbow working in front of the body, we can keep that lead wrist flatter. Obviously this is a not a quick fix, but that gets the shaft into just a good enough position here where let's say like the button of the club at this point would be pointing more like at the ball or outside it as opposed to pointing inside it. And then all of a sudden you have all the tools in the world to rotate. Once you rotate, low point control becomes the easiest task in the world. Uh, start line control because you're not flipping at it becomes easy. Your strike doesn't move into the heel anymore because your hands aren't working away from you through the ball. All these things can get sorted out pretty comfortably like clear as day to me, but the transition is really where I see the things struggle. So let me know your thoughts. I'll just share this for now and then we'll uh, bounce some ideas back and forth and we'll start talking through how to make some uh, continuous changes from there.